So this is actually going to be a haul of some products that I received from brands through the website Octoly. In case you are unaware, um, Octoly is actually kind of like a middleman. It's pretty much like a huge store for you to pick out items if you are a YouTuber and add them into kind of like your cart. And if the brand approves the items that you pick out, then they send them out to you and you do a review on them within a certain time frame. And I actually have five different products that I wanted to discuss with you guys. I think some of these are really crazy because I never in a million years thought that I would get items sent to me from these brands and especially some of them were extremely generous in what they sent out. So I'm gonna start off with the item that I've had the longest and it is actually the Pure Eye Polish Eye Base and Top Coat with a silicone applicator tool. Let me show you here. I had all six colors sent to me from the brand and that completely took me by surprise. I thought maybe they'd send like one or two, but they sent me all six of them. I'm extremely grateful for that because they are, I believe they're $24 a piece. You can find them at Ulta or at the Pure Cosmetics website online. But essentially what it is, is that they are these little cream shadow bases. You can, well, you can either use them as a base or you can wear them alone. You can dab them over dry eyeshadows or just over an eyeshadow primer on the lids all by themselves. You can layer them or they're kind of, they're kind of interesting because they're not like a typical cream shadow. It actually took me a little bit to figure out how to use them. They also came with these silicone applicator tools. Um, when you do buy them from either Ulta or the website, they come with one of these and I've heard a lot of mention that people say that it's better to just use your finger and I would agree with that on some of the shades, not with all of them. With some of the shades, like the lighter ones, like these two here, I have, uh, what is this one, Satin. This is one of my favorite ones. Um, I definitely prefer using this, you know, with my finger to apply this one all over the lid and up into the crease and everything. I actually have this one on the lid underneath my eye look today. And the eyeshadow that I have on top of it is another product that I'm gonna talk about in a second. So Cashmere, this one, it's almost like a yellow shade. I will add in some swatches as I'm talking about these items. This one in Silk, it's like a rose gold color. This one, you can use it just by your fingertips as well, and it works just fine that way. I find the ones that work better with the silicone applicator are definitely the darker ones for sure because they they have more of like a shimmery essence to them, especially this caviar one. Oh my goodness, so beautiful. So this one in suede has like a it has a shimmer running through it. Um, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it there. You'll probably be able to see it in the swatches. So this one in suede, it's probably my least favorite, but that's just because it doesn't have near the amount of sparkle that some of the other ones do. This one is more of just like a satiny finish kind of on my eyes for the most part. It does have like a slight shimmer running through it, but nothing like some of these other ones. Velvet, this one's really pretty. This has like a silver pink sort of shimmer running through it. It's not nearly as intense as the one in Caviar that I'm gonna talk about in a second, but this one's really pretty. It's like a reddish plum sort of purple color. It's really pretty. Velvet is a really pretty one. And then the last one is Caviar. This one's probably my favorite. I wore this one in my January favorites video. I'm not sure if that's went up yet. And I also wore it in my last Project Pan, Project 20 Pan update, the update number three. I wore this all over the lid and just kind of blended it into the crease area and then used some of just my naked palette. But let me show you on these, so if I take a little bit and I use an applicator, you just wanna use a very small amount when you're applying these as well. They're kinda of tricky to work with, but once you get the hang of it, they're actually really nice products. I actually really like them. So if I'm putting this on my arm here, um, so if I apply it, 
like that. You can see that sparkle running through it, but if I take the applicator and I press into the product and I keep doing that, it kind of intensifies the shimmer. Do you see that? How it made it way more shimmery now? Just like that. So it's like throwing off my lighting because there's so much sparkle coming off of this product. Some of them, like the caviar one, it does have a really dark base. So when you do smudge it out like that, what's left on the uh, silicone applicator is more of like just a black base. So when I put this all over my lid, when I blended it out into the crease area, it definitely had more of a black shade to it. It was very interesting, very different. I've never had a cream product act like this before, but I most certainly love these. I do have a couple eye looks that I can insert off to the side. So like I said, the satin one is probably my favorite one of all time. If I finish this off by some miracle, I would definitely consider repurchasing this one in satin. It's just pretty. I like a pink base over like a pinky champagne base over a gold, you know, nine out of 10 times. But this other one in cashmere, the one that has more of a yellow tone to it, this one's really pretty. This is more of like an ivory shade, not necessarily yellow. But when you compare the two to one another, you can definitely see the difference between them. Like this one's definitely more, satin is way more pink than um, cashmere. The rose gold one in silk here. I do have a photo of this one. I don't have a video of it, but I'll show that off to the side over there. I also have a video of velvet, the plummy purple looking one. This one looks so pretty. I used um, some deeper purples in the crease area with that one. The suede, which is more of like the chocolatey brown bronze one. I think I have a photo of this one. And then the last item, like I mentioned before, is caviar. This is the one that I just did a swatch on the back of my hand. It's so pretty. Like I said, if you wanted to check it out on the lid, I do have those two videos and I'll link them down in the description box. My favorites video and the project pan update where you can see this on the lid. I think it looks absolutely gorgeous. This would be another one that I would definitely repurchase if I used it all up. I think they're fun if you want to kind of mess with a new cream shadow or a new cream base product. They're cool and you know they come in a wide variety of shades that you can pick from. I'm trying to pick them up and I keep dropping them. <laughs> so here they are. They do come in a wide variety of shades and finishes even. So I think they're really cool products. I would probably, if I had to repurchase two of them, I would repurchase the caviar and the satin shade, the kind of uh, pinky champagne sort of tones. So complete opposites, but these would be the two that I would repurchase probably first. They are kind of hard to get out. Um, what I like to do, I like to hit them against my hand. I'll hit, I'll have it upside down and I'll hit it the sides against my palm. Then I'll hit the bottom against my hand and then I'll flip the cap down and hit it like that. And then it'll actually end up on the lid. You can either scrape it off the lid or you can actually get it off of that little mesh netting thing in there. So, so just for the price on those guys, because they are $26, I would say that they, mm, they are a really nice base, but they are kind of tricky, especially the, you know, more intense colors that you work with. So I would say, depending on the color, I would say an eight and a half to nine out of 10 on those. The next product is the Givenchy. Uh, and I don't speak French, so I might be completely butchering that, but it is the Shimmering Nudes palette from Givenchy. And that is it there. That's the packaging at least. This is what the palette looks like here. This is absolutely stunning packaging. I love this packaging. So it has like a mirrored top right here and this little kind of pyramid stud. That is what you push to open the palette. It kind of pops the lid and then you lift the lid up like that and let's see how am i going to do this okay just to show the shimmer in some of them that is what the palette looks like there and that is the true 
color of these shadows. So that is them there. So you do have this matte one that's right up here, that nude shade. And then you have kind of like a mid-tone brown right here. That one's also matte. And this one is matte as well. This is like the deepest color. So I do have, mm, I have one, two, three, four, five five of these shadows on my eyes right now. I did not use this one this time around. I've actually used this palette three times now. Oh wait, no, I take that back. I've used it four times, including this look today. This palette is getting a lot of flack. It just barely was released. It's limited edition. I believe it's $66. Yeah, it's $66 available at Sephora and on the Givenchy website, but it's getting a lot of flack for being very subtle and very sheer and I do agree with that if you're using them dry they are extremely sheer this nude one barely even shows up on my skin it's essentially the exact same tone as my skin just a hint warmer so I have that one into the crease you cannot see the nude one and then I put this lighter brown one into the crease area then I deepened it up with the dark brown and then I put a little bit of this kind of gold let me give you a swatch. Kind of a gold tone. I, I call this like an antique gold because it's almost like a dirty gold. I don't like true gold shadows and I put this right in that area there. So you can see it's light at the inner corner and then there's, hopefully you can see that sheen in the center and then I do have it deepened up on the outer corner. Um, it's a little chunky when it's dry. I'm not sure you're gonna be able to see that. Like when I go to put this on the back of my hand, you see it's a little chunky there. Uh, they do take a lot of building to get them to show up. Um, it probably took me twice the amount of time to build up my eye look today to have it this intense and this deep even. Uh, so I don't know, there are some drawbacks to this palette, but if you use the shadows wet, you get a lot more payoff. And normally I would just throw out these little sponge tip applicators, but if you use these, if you get the applicators wet, the little sponges wet, that's actually how I got the gold to show up a little bit better. This lighting's not helping it. And it actually had the white show up a lot more sparkly and intense on the eye. So, I don't know. There's a ton of shimmer. My favorite one is probably this white one, and mine looks kind of kind of weird in there because when I used it wet, it did kind of ruin some of its prettiness, but that is what it looks like swatched on my finger. Let me, is it there? It's really pretty. And it looks absolutely gorgeous. Just being all shimmery like that, this would be a gorgeous face highlight or, you know, I put it a little at the inner corner and I don't really have fallout with this palette. None of the shimmer pieces fell down on my face. So that was nice. Um, I didn't have fallout with the matte ones either, but this brown one here with the shimmers, it's a little disappointing for me. I actually haven't tried that one wet. That's the only shimmer one that it's that's not been used wet. I think if you wet the really intense dark brown right here, I think that would actually work really well as a liner. And that would look really pretty for like a natural, neutral look with this palette. Essentially, there's two looks that you can do with this palette. Let me show you this brown. Maybe you'll be able to pick up the shimmers in the brown. You see, even the brown. These two right here have some really nice, intense, shimmery flecks in there. So the shadows kind of change form a little bit when you, you use them wet. So I would recommend if you're having trouble with this palette to use them wet. I think a lot of people are knocking it down because it's very sheer, like this, this nude one. Like I was talking about, like you can barely see it there, but when I put it on, like you can hardly see, like you can see a little down here, but that's because I'm so incredibly pale. The brown ones, let me give you swatches just for fun. So this is the lighter brown right there, and then the dark brown is right there. I mean, they blend out on the eyes really nice, but they do take a lot to build up, so... Uh, 
I don't know, this palette is absolutely gorgeous. I'm gonna have a lot of fun using it and I will definitely use the majority of this palette. I'll probably just pull maybe a couple shadows from this and mix it with another palette that I'm using or just pull the shimmer ones from this and mix it with some mattes from another palette or vice versa. So I don't know, I think it's a pretty palette. If you're a collector of Givenchy, then definitely pick it up, try it out, see how you like it. So my overall thoughts on this is it's a, it's a nice palette, but essentially you only have two looks that you can do. You can do a neutral look with the matte and you know some of the shimmers and using it dry or you can do a more intense and deeper eye look like a smoky eye with this palette. Those are essentially just the two looks that you can do. So because of the price of this palette, the $66 price tag and the limited variety of looks that you can do with this palette, I'm gonna have to give this one like a six and a half, seven out of 10, not because it's not a pretty palette and not because you can't create a look with it, but because it takes a lot of work. And if you're paying that much for a palette, it's, I don't feel like you should have to work that much for your eyeshadow look, you know, to have your eye look come out looking nice. So anyway, that was my thoughts on it. It's a really pretty palette and I'm definitely going to use it and I definitely 100% appreciate this product. I don't think I would have ended up with this palette if I was to purchase this on my own because I definitely don't think that I would go out and spend $66 on this to begin with. So anyways, I really do appreciate getting this and I really will use the shadows and enjoy them. Just, I have to be honest with how I feel about the palette, unfortunately. I do have a product here from Black Up, and I've heard a little bit about this brand. I do know that they are available at Sephora and also on their website as well, Black Up Cosmetics website. And this is a black owned makeup brand. I've heard a little bit about this brand. Um, let me find my notes here. I did have some notes that I wanted to mention. So this is a $24 eyeliner that I'm going to be talking about. They did just release a ton of bright colors, but I opted for the black one. So this is what it looks like right here. Just really sleek, thin packaging, smaller. Well, it's about the size of a pen or a marker. This is the Matte Waterproof Liquid Eyeliner. And again, there's the packaging. This is a high performance waterproof formula that provides an infallible result for 24 hours and it is resistant to heat and humidity as well. And this liner was specially developed for women of color, but you know, everybody can use it. It is, $24 at Sephora, like I mentioned, and this is matte. That's the reason why I wanted to get it. Not only because it's matte, but also because it is waterproof. So that is what the applicator point looks like. I do have a video of me applying this to my eyes um, earlier in the day. So my only issue with this liner, you can make really small lines, thick lines. I have to go over the line, the spot, multiple times. I cannot just do one fell swoop and have it turn out perfect. I have to go over the same area, you know, six, seven, eight times even. And I feel like after you're building up that much product, yes, it is matte, but it does build up on the eye. And sometimes if I'm using a mascara wand that has really pokey bristles, they can actually, you know, bump into the eyeliner and lift up little flakes of the eyeliner. I had a little pack Patch, probably, uh, I don't know, a, I would say maybe like an eighth of an inch lift up off my one eye when I was applying mascara and I had to go back in and redo that little spot. But I feel like it looks really matte. It stays matte. This is one that you, you know, it has that ball in there to mix it up as you are applying it. I like this product, but I have trouble going out and thinking that I would repurchase this and spend $24 on this when, you know, there's super inexpensive liners available at the drugstore. This e.l.f. one, I do have to say, it's definitely not nearly as matte. And the wand on this e.l.f. one is way more flexible. This is actually a brush tip instead of a felt tip. It's not nearly as deep and as intense as the black up one. Um, 
if I do go over the same spot five or six times with the e.l.f. one, I will have it lift up as well. Like the liner will actually lift up if I'm using a really pokey mascara wand, like I mentioned. So I just have to A, be careful when I'm applying mascara when I use this product, and B, try and go over the liner area with as few amounts of passes as I possibly can. And I think that would, you know, make the liner just look a lot better on the eyes and I think that it would have a better longevity overall. So I, I really do like this. I like how matte it is. I like how intense it is, but I do have a couple issues with it as well. I feel like I'm being incredibly picky here, but I'm just trying to be honest about what the positives are, what the negatives are, if I would repurchase, why I wouldn't repurchase. I'm trying to give you guys everything that I can so it's a well-rounded review and because I did get these items for free, I feel like sometimes it can feel a little biased. So I'm trying to give as much information as I can about the products. So this next one, this is actually the Long Sexy Hair Lux Dry Shampoo. This is from the Sexy Hair brand. They have a lot of different lines out. I've had um, some of my favorite products. My favorite hairspray is from the Sexy Hair, the big... It's in the big, huge red can. It's the volumizing hairspray. That one's my favorite hairspray of all time. I love the scent on that. And I found that the scents that sexy hair products have in them are so delicious. Um, I've had the soy tri-wheat leave-in conditioner from Octoly before. Love, love that thing. I love that leave-in conditioner. This, this product here, the scent on this is out of this world. Amazing. I do have a couple points that I wrote down on this. I don't have the price specifically. I'm not sure if this is just not out yet or if it's still coming soon. It is available on the Sexy Hair website and I think it's coming soon to Ulta if I'm not mistaken. I don't think it's there yet though. So this one actually has zero white residue and I don't mean that it blends in and there's no white residue left behind. Like it sprays out zero white residue. Like I can sit here and spray this on my arm all day long and it's not gonna leave a white residue behind. When I spray some of my other dry shampoos, the whole area around the nozzle, the spray nozzle, will be covered in like a white residue or a tan residue or something. This one's clear. Uh, it smells so good. Uh, the scent on this is sweet, but it's fresh at the same time. I really like the scent. I, I will wear this just for the scent. Even if it did nothing for my hair, I would still spray this in my hair. Um, I also wrote down that it was incredibly easy to work into the roots. I actually have fourth day hair right now and normally I don't push my hair like that, but I really wanted to push this product to see how long I could use this. How I count it is the first day that I wash my hair, it's first day hair, then you know, the day after I wash my hair, that's second day hair. So I'm not sure if that's how you guys do it or you know, if we're the same, <laughs> but technically this would be fourth day hair, even though it's three days after. I definitely need to wash my hair tomorrow. I don't go this long normally, but I really wanted to push this product. I did use this yesterday and today. I, I feel like I don't have as much volume at the roots as I could, as I've had with other dry shampoos that I've used previously, but some of those other ones leave your hair feeling really dirty and like, I don't know, almost dirtier than it felt before. Um, I don't feel like my hair looks super greasy, but it definitely needs to be washed. It's ideal and especially made for long hair or for extensions. If you have extensions, this would be a really nice product. I think mostly because it's not leaving a ton of residue in your hair. It's not leaving a ton of a white cast. Uh, honestly, not enough volume is the only negative that I have for this product. Everything else about this product is amazing. Uh, some information here, I just wanted to read it to you to give you a little background about the product, what's in it, that kind of a thing. So this one, this dry shampoo is formulated with moringa oil and biotin. The moringa oil provides a little bit of moisture and the biotin provides, you know, a little bit less breakage with your hair. I think that's why it's, you know, formulated for an ideal for longer hair and extensions so it won't you know have as much breakage over time i i would agree i feel like this definitely does the job it doesn't leave my hair feeling dirtier and 
zero white residue is always a plus when you have super dark hair like I do if you dye your hair really dark um, definitely check this one out um, I think sexy hair is a little bit expensive but you more times than not you can find them on sale at Ulta sometimes buy two get one free or you can use your coupons at Ulta on this product as well so anyway that was really nice dry shampoo and then the final item that I have here is actually a face mask and I don't do a lot of hydrating face masks just because generally speaking I will break out if I leave a hydrating product on my face for you know 30 minutes or overnight but this one is the Givenchy Hydra Sparkling Moisturizing and Embellishing Foam Mask. Now, when I first applied for this, I thought this was one of those foaming masks where you put it on and it'll foam up and get all big and puffy and everything. No, 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 no. The actual product is foamy. It's so weird. It's like the texture of this mask is somehow has these air bubbles in it. It's like the foam on top of something. It's uh, I cannot explain it, but it, I don't think you're gonna be able to see it. It almost feels like there's little teeny air bubbles in this mask And if I sat here and went like this, it would smash out all of the air bubbles That's what it feels like when I'm applying it. So I really feel like the packaging on this mask is Beautiful. I love the little pyramid stud cap that they have. It's like a mirror finish uh, This is just a really light baby blue kind of color. It has the same, you know, pyramid stud on the eyeshadow palette as on top of here But this just looks so pretty out on the counter or something But anyway, so this did come with a seal that I had to peel off. I thought that was kind of cool It was so satisfying for some reason. I'm not quite sure why so with this one I do have to read some things to you guys from the little pamphlet that came with it because I feel like it's important to know You know a little bit of background about certain Products. So for this mask, Givenchy Laboratories have created Hydro Sparkling with its dual light moisturizing and light energizing technology that adds the effervescence, effervescence of sparkling water to the skin for a dazzling light effect. At the origin of its dual performance lies a technological feat, the sparkling water complex. A combination of sugars and amino, amino acid derivatives that help moisturize and energize the skin's appearance. So for the light moisturizing, it says the sparkling water complex helps to form a network of water bubbles in the epidermis. The skin is moisturized, smoothed, and reflects the light beautifully. And for the light energy, it says this organized effervescence allows all layers of the epidermis to be irrigated, further strengthening the skin's capacity to reflect light. That's pretty awesome. I feel like it goes into an incredible amount of description in this little pamphlet here. So essentially the results that you're supposed to get from this product is that the skin appears smoother, brighter, and fuller as though plumped from within, which is the right equation for a radiant complexion. It says on here that you are supposed to apply it all over the face leave to take effect for five minutes and massage gently to allow any excess product to penetrate. And then you're supposed to rinse it off. What I do, I feel like it works a little bit better if I, let me take off this so it doesn't keep reflecting. So I found that if I apply a really thin layer on my skin, I can actually, I feel like it works better if I let it sit on the skin for about 20 or 30 minutes. I do have dry skin though, so if you have oily skin or some other kind of skin, definitely probably read the directions and follow them. But if you have dry skin, leave it on for 20 or 30 minutes so it can really absorb up into your skin. And then I just take, instead of rinsing it off with water, I'll just take a warm washcloth and kind of just lightly wipe any excess that hasn't been absorbed up into my skin. And I feel like it really moisturizes my skin and kind of makes my fine lines appear a little more plump for the rest of that night and then into the next day. By the end of the next day, I can't really tell a difference from my skin. So you can use this a couple times a week. So, you know, I don't know. I feel like the price isn't necessarily that bad for a Givenchy product. This is $56. I, I would just say that the less Less is more for this. Honestly, I can't really find much of a flaw with this product except for the price tag. So aside from the price tag, I would give this item a nine out of 10. If I just wanted to splurge on something and kind of treat myself, this would definitely be something that I would look into 
repurchasing. So anyway, that was it. I know that was a lot of products. I apologize if this video was insanely long, which I'm sure it was, but overall I did like everything. I just wanted to give you guys, you know, the pros and the cons, what works, what doesn't, what I can compare it to. I feel like I can go and take this big box full of stuff and put it away now. I know this video is insanely long, but I appreciate you guys watching. Um, thank you so much to the brands who sent these products out to me to try out. And that is it. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.